Okay, as you can see, I have the longitudinal energy device completely set up and operational. It's been working for a couple of days now, and I've done a whole bunch of experiments, and I'll get into those highlights from those experiments very shortly. But firstly, I'll just give you a very quick rundown of the setup, and then we can get straight into the fun stuff. Uh, okay, starting from here, we've got 240 volts AC coming in through this watt meter, so we can ascertain how much power we are drawing to run this circuit. At the moment, we're using about 60, 70 watts of power at the most, at full power. Uh, the power comes straight into this 12 volt, 2.5 amp LED power supply. Uh, the power goes straight in to these 12 volt DC input banana plugs here. Um, we've got the on and off switch here and that controls the input power into this PWM. Uh, it's a high frequency PWM at 13 kilohertz and the PWM feeds into an inverter which I have mounted under here and the inverter output goes straight through this EMI filter uh, which then goes through the variac, which you can see there, and out through these switches for the output. So we've got a on and off switch here, and also a pulsed on switch there. And the output is a standard 240 volt AC output plug, and we've also got these outputs here. Um, at the moment, the output's going straight to this 12,000 volt neon sign transformer um, and then that goes straight out to the spark gap here which I've modified since the last time I showed it to you. You can tell that the frame is a different setup and there's a reason for that but I've also finished this second electrode assembly here. Um, I've been playing around with electrodes and I found that this one gives the best airflow pattern to control the spark better to discharge between this electrode and this electrode here. Um, I've kept this electrode long for reasons which I won't go into at the moment but you can see that the output of the neon sign transformer is literally just um, clamped on here and I've put a bit of heat shrink on there and a cable tie just to keep it firm. Um, and that's another piece of ceramic bakelite. Just drilled a hole through there and literally sanded this by hand so that it was a nice snug fit. Um, underneath that, I've also mounted in another hole the 200 millimeter long vacuum tube that Carl made for me because it's um, it's a lot harder to illuminate and get get to that threshold for. Um, illumination of a vacuum than it is to illuminate a neon. So I've mounted that in there as a bit of an amp meter um, so that the brightness of this tube will indicate our power level uh, on the output of this circuit uh, and it works quite well. Now coming out from the spark gap we go straight to the capacitor banks here. I've wired them up with high voltage wire, uh, put a couple of ring terminals on the ends and some heat shrink, so I've just tried to minimise the exposure to the air. Um, that's one cap bank. The other cap bank over here is connected to this porcelain terminal block. We've got some 40 kV wire here connecting the electrode to the terminal block, and the neon sign transformer comes into that side, and it's connected top and bottom by this red loop here, another 40 kV cable. Uh, and the output, at the moment, I've got the output going straight over to these two small pieces of um, tube. And that's just literally taped on there. So we can take that off quickly if we want to change the electrodes, which I have done a couple of times. I've used a whole bunch of different types. So as you can see, we're using this as an open circuit at the moment. Um, there is no closed closed loop. So that's what we're looking at.
Okay, this is the first trial run. Longitudinal energy. Too big. Pulling it in, trying again. Okay, got a spark. Turning the air on, just slightly, powering on. Just a spark, um, just the air flow. Increasing airflow, we've got three white neon slip wireless in there. We've got a bit of a neon, a red neon pulsing on just slightly. Increasing the air. Air is at near a lot more air. Right, cut out. Power off. Power back on. Using air. Power on. Power off. Okay, so the device is running. Spark cap's going through the cap. Two main electrodes, electrodeless bulb sitting on top. Now we're starting to see some pulsing of the um, neon, so we're starting to get a bit, bit of an increase in power.
Okay, so we've got the electrodes here, as you can see, and the other one is just sitting here. And we have the compass sitting in the middle, directly in the center. A quick pulse test. Working fine, we'll turn up the air. Another pulse. More air. More air. Opening the spark cap. Opening it up a bit more. Bit more. Bit more air again. Okay, this is Dewey. He's got two fluoros, standard, not modified, straight out of the box. Actually, power seems to be quite low. We don't actually have any glowing of the vacuum tube underneath the spark cap, so we'll try and increase the power. There we go, we have power now. Maybe we'll do that whole thing again. Now we've got some brightness coming out of the coming out of the tubes. Now both of these are fully lit. Spark that running. Now you can see here we've got the plasma tube glowing brightly. We've got that plasma tube glowing brightly under the spark cap. And here comes Stewie with his yellow and white fluoros lit wirelessly in his hands. Okay, now that I've had a chance to play with this thing for a while, it's time to make some modifications and do a bit of an upgrade. The first thing I want to do is to take these three transistors off here and mount them onto a separate heatsink, which I have lined up ready to go. I also want to do a bit of work on this spark gap assembly. The main thing I want to do is, as you can see, the reason I've changed the setup of this frame is so that I can add another sliding stage next to this one that way I can mount a block onto that tie that block into this standoff and the main reason behind doing that is to reduce that slack and that's just caused by about a uh, you know 500 micron tolerance in this device um, but at the distance that it is away from the base there's a you know that half half a millimeter turns into a good four or five millimeters up here 
So um, I'll be doing that. And I will also be playing with other capacitors that I've got in my little starter kit. Um, and the other important upgrade I'll be doing is between this transformer here and the spark gap, I will be attempting to build a resonant air core step up transformer and that will um, enable us to step it up to somewhere between 50 and 100,000 volts before it hits um, the spark gap and the capacitors and the rest of the circuit. Um, I am making a little bit of progress on these magnetically quenched spark gaps. Um, I've cut a couple of the insulating discs, of, but yeah, that's about it really. Um, and if you blinked too quickly during that highlights section of the video, you might have missed this. This is the spiral neon electrodeless bulb that Carl's made for me. As you can see, there's no... Um, hang on, I'll try and... This is not working. Here we go. There's no electrodes, it's just glass. And we've got these plumbing fittings here on the ends just so that I can mount that onto a plate and just have it stand there by itself. Um, so that's pretty cool. So thanks, Carl. I've also got a few more capacitors here. I've got six of these 50 kV capacitors. Um, I've got six more coming and that'll give me 12 at 50 kV. Um, now, meters, I tried to, I bought a little 0 to 500 volt AC meter and I actually installed that on the output here but as soon as I turned on the device for the first time it blew up and the only thing it reads now is 150 volts so it's pretty useless it's fried um, and I put that down to the longitudinal energy um, again the multimeter that I had purchased recently the cheapo one fried that one um, just by measuring the voltage that was going through my body um, and I was using that at a distance from the, um, the output of the circuit so again longitudinal energy not very good for these sort of devices um, you don't want to get good multimeters and stuff too close to the, um, the output circuit because it will just fry your electronics okay so that's about all I've got for you Thanks for watching, um, please subscribe and leave comments.